right? If so, for those of you joining over recording, uh, the link for this lecture is a little bit different. It's up, up above on my screen share. And then we also have a group main link that you should be able to use to join a group chat for ops. NGB apps are due tonight, um, Sunday night, 11.59 p.m. if you ever want to be part of a GB. All right, so, so far we've covered some Arduino basics with input output pins, um, blinking LED. Last project was variable, um, the auto flashlight project and all of you guys did really well on that. So we're happy to see that happening. And we've been covering some circuit basics with schematics, Ohm's law, and Kirchhoff's laws. And today we're going to look at the, another component called the potentiometer, which is basically a voltage divided circuit. And we'll also look at um, digital versus analog signals, PWM, and the project. All right. So starting off, we're going to talk about the potentiometer because you'll be using that in your project for the next two weeks. Um, the potentiometer is a type of variable resistor, uh, kind of similar to the photoresistor used before, but a little bit different. So if you look at the diagram, um, there's this little wiper, and that's actually what you turn when you twist the potentiometer knob. And um, what it does is uh, it, it, that shifts the resistance in it. Um, you'll find that it's actually a voltage divider. So it's not like the photoresistor where the single photoresistor acted as a single resistor. The potentiometer acts as two resistors, and by twisting the knob, you sort of change the division of resistance between the two ends of it. And then you can use the pin two there to measure the voltage in between. So in the last project, you measured the voltage between the regular resistor and the photoresistor. This one, you'll just be able to use the pin in the middle to measure the voltage between the two resistors. So since it is a voltage divider, we're going to review uh, voltage divider circuits real quick. So as its name implies, it divides the input voltage. Um, and it's when we talk about voltage divider circuits, it's always voltage source and then two resistors in series. So two resistors in series are equivalent um, is, well, simply the sum of both resistances. Right, yes. Um, yeah, so um, just look at these. These aren't too hard. Don't try, don't get tricked by them. But um, uh, if you guys want to shout out any answers, I'll type it in chat for the first one, where R1 is 0 ohms, R2 is 100 ohms. What is V out? These are just um, to help wake up your brain from the food coma. OK, cool. Yeah, so Corwin said five volts. Uh, that's right. So since R1 is zero ohms, it's it's just essentially a wire right there. Um, so there'd be no voltage drop across of it and five volts at V out. That's correct. Okay. Next, Next one, one has the one. switch. Anyone get a quick answer? Okay, cool. cool. Yeah, and then similar logic. Um, there's zero volts dropped at the second one because it's zero ohms. So it's going to be the full drop across R1. And then the last one where they're both 50 ohms. It'll just get divided by two. So yeah. yeah. So just let's... Sorry, I kind of gave that off. All right, so. <laughs> cool. Uh, and then the general expression for um, figuring out the uh, voltage, the V out voltage. Um, you could derive this using um, Kirchhoff's loop rule, um, some of the stuff we talked about in previous lectures, we won't go over that. But this is the um, expression you use to find the current, and then from the current, you can find V out. Um, and that also tells you the voltage across the first resistor and the second resistor, so super useful. Um, it's important to know this stuff because this comes up a lot in a bunch of circuits we'll do and in this project. All right, a couple more questions. These ones are a little bit more difficult. So at the first one, we have a voltage source of five volts. Um, v out is two volts, R2 is 100 ohms, and you got to find the first resistor's resistance. Yes, 150. So 
Uh, you could use the equations and you know solve for the unknowns there, but um, a quick way to do it is to look at the uh, ratio of the output voltage to the input voltage. And um, you see it's two over five, and then um, you could set up something similar. So R2 um, over R1 plus R2 should be also two fifths, and you could solve it that way. All right, looking at the next one, the source is five volts. Yeah, it's three volts. R1's 100, find R2. <laughs> All right, yeah, so this is this is kind of a fun question, I guess. Um, it's just switched. It's pretty much saying the same. Well, it's similar information. Um, if V out is three volts, that tells you that the voltage across the first resistor is two volts. And then that's the same question kind of as the first one. So the, resistance, the resistors are just switched in this case. All right, cool, 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 cool. Any questions so far? Ah, we have a question slide. Let me go to that. Questions so far. Okay, so we've looked at potentiometer, voltage divider circuit. Analog read is from the last lecture. You should remember because we used it. Yeah. Okay. So now we're gonna start talking about signals and PWM. Um, there are um, when we talk about signals, they can either be digital or analog. Digital signals are discrete values, so they're either on or off, or like high or low, zero or one, that kind of stuff. And analog signal, on the other hand, have continuous range of values. So digital signals are usually modeled by square waves, analog signals, sine wave, cosine wave, things like that. Digital signals will be like switches, computers, your um, zero and ones, all that. And then um, analog, we call potentiometer, human voice, eye sensors, those readings, those components, analog. So for digital signals, we use digital read and digital write. If you recall from the LED circuit, we used digital write. Um, to write voltage to the LED to turn it on. And then for analog signals, we have analog read, which lets you read an, uh, an analog voltage and analog write, which, you, which lets, you, lets you write some analog voltage. So if you see on the diagrams, diagrams below, um, digital signals are just square waves. So it's either on five volts or off zero volts. Analog signals, on the other hand, very, very. Are continuous. Boom. Okay. All right. So, but we know all like computers stuff are digital because they are just all zero and ones when you go down to the lower level. So how do Arduinos create analog signals? I said earlier that there's an analog write function that lets you write analog write continuous range of voltages to certain pins, but how is that possible? And that is possible using pulse width modulation. Um, yeah, that's pulse width modulation. If you see on the diagram below, it's kind of it kind of gives you a sense of how it works. But what is pulse width modulation? Pulse width modulation is varying time on and off to get a continuous range of values. So basically, since we cannot um, actually output continuous ranged values, we just vary the time it's um, high and low to mimic continuous range. And um, if you see on the left-hand side, um, a duty cycle, I think I actually have this on the last slide. Yes, duty cycle is uh, the percent of the time your signal is on or high. So average your average voltage of the signal will be the duty cycle times the high voltage. And this intuitively makes sense if you see the graph on the um, lower right-hand corner. If your duty cycle is 0%, you'll, you, the percent of the, the 
a ratio. <laughs> if your duty cycle is um, zero, your signal will never be high, so you just have low voltage. And if your duty cycle is 50%, your signal will be high 50% and low 50%, so you'll get like a 50% value of the, your high voltage. So higher duty cycle means higher time on, higher average value, and lower duty cycle means lower um, time on and um, less time on and lower average value, right? And then frequency is just how many cycles per second, usually in hertz. Um, and pulse width modulation look, um, works by just um, sending out square waves, so digital signals, square waves at very high frequency. Um, but why does the frequency need to be high for pulse width modulation to work? Um, let's have you guys type in the chat, what happens with this kind of idea of duty cycle being used to mimic analog signals, but we have a low frequency. So in other words, we turn, turn our switch on and off to um, get some continuous range of values but you're slow and then you turn it on and off at a low frequency, what will happen? Yes. Mm, okay, so basically all it means if you look at the waveform is we're gonna turn the signal on and off. And if you're too slow, that's just basically blinking, right? Imagine an LED connected to the signal, um, to this voltage. Uh, if your frequency is not high enough, um, it'll just blink and the blink will be visible to human eyes. But if the frequency is high enough, um, it'll blink, blink fast enough. Um, actually, if you, if, you're, if you set your frequency to be greater than um, certain point that your component, the LED, can handle, it'll just look like it's continuous, you know? Yeah, so these are some of, um, some ranges of frequency we usually use to do PWM. All right, any questions so far? Ryder, do you have anything to add? Oh, I think you covered it well. Okay. Um, I had a quick question. Yes. So, so is it like like every single I'm trying to wrap my head around this a little bit more. So every single time that blinks, it like takes a measurement kind of. Um it's more like you just blink it fast enough um that it behaves like a co constant voltage signal at a lower voltage than your high Got voltage. It. Yeah. So what exactly happens at every blink? So at every blink, what exactly happens? Uh, so it's, it's like you take the frequency of your blinks to, uh, yeah, you take the limit of the frequency of your blinks to infinity, and then it just becomes a continuous voltage. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. You don't have to worry too much about how it actually works, but you get the idea. It's you take the average value, higher duty cycle, higher voltage. Okay. All right. So how do you do PWM on Arduino? Arduino uses PWM to output um, with different duty cycles to continuous to produce continuous voltage, as I said before. And this is your analog write function, pin, which takes in pin and value as parameters. So analog write just basically takes care of all the PWM you have to do. So, um, but you can use analog write on PWM pins only. There are certain PWMs and certain pins reserved for PWMs. And then these are, we'll see in the, in the diagram the next slide, but one important thing to note is that you don't use, you don't do analog write on analog pins. Analog pins are for reading reading analog values, so they're only for analog read, 
not analog rate. And that's, that makes sense because analog rate is basically PWM done by the Arduino. Right, and your value that you output has to be in the range of 0 to 255. So this was the pin out you guys saw a couple weeks ago. Um, so echoing what Taylor said, you're going to want to use the digital pins for the analog right, so the PW1. And if you see in this picture, and you guys should see this also on your actual Arduino, it says digital PWM and then the little tilde. So that tells you that you only want to use the pins with the tilde next to it for the analog right. If you try and use it like on pin number seven, it's not gonna work right. And you know, your circuit's gonna be bad. Um, and then also don't use the analog pins because those are for reading values only, they're for input only, and your circuit also won't work. So yep. this, yeah, in this project, um, whenever you wanna use analog right, make sure you're using a pin that the tilde next to it. Is, are they labeled by tildes because they look like analog signals? Oh, Actually, that'd be, uh, that would make sense. That would make sense. Yeah. Preston just reminded me. a good me. way to remember it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, any questions so far? So you can make sine waves out of square waves. You can also make square waves out of sine waves. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. And uh, yeah, so introducing the next project. So what you're going to do is um, you're going to make, um, you're going to use the fan motor in the, well, it's a motor, and then you could attach a little fan thing onto it in your kit. Um, and you're going to make that so that you can select different speeds of it. So it should have a um, slow, a medium, and a high speed. Um, one thing is that uh, the, there's leads attached to the fan. and they can break off pretty easily if you're not careful. So like they'll tear off. And if you don't have any way to solder, it's just gonna be broken for the project. And that's okay. You can still do this project with a, an LED and a resistor and just have it change brightness, but it won't be as cool as the fan. So try your best not to break it. Um, I broke it pretty easily. So just be more careful. Than that one. And um, uh, it's uh, this project's gonna follow a similar format to the last one where you'll have two weeks to do it um, and you should, be done with like up to checkpoint two by the first week, but you don't have to get checked off for that. Just have the whole thing done by uh, next Friday. Yeah, and like the last project, I don't think it should take too long. So, I mean, you're gonna have finals and stuff. So if you can get it done early, try to get it done early and not stress yourself out in the future. And um, yeah, so if you do end up breaking your fan like Ryder did in the summer, um, just just contact Ryder and yeah, we have- a, well, I'll send you a different different little schematic to work, but it shouldn't be too much. It won't be that much different. Right. And um, to get checked off, you know, the drill already, find us on Discord. We'll get the website for schedule or just message us. You know, we're available at your times sometimes, right? And we just have a couple of tips for you to use throughout your project. Yeah, so um, you're gonna be using buttons for the first two parts of this lab. Um, they're not super complicated. Um, the only thing that can be difficult is, if you look at the diagram, there's, there's four pins on the button and there's two pairs of them that are already shorted. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you insert it correctly. Um, you can do it by trial and error. If you follow the spec, you won't break anything if you insert it in wrong, and then you just got to rotate it 90 degrees. But you can tell by looking at the underside, there'll be um, parallel lines underneath, and those sides are already shorted. And then when you press the button, the whole thing is shorted together, creating a path. Um, and then with the buttons, we're going to uh, we're going to just detect when this uh, it'll create a current that flows. And you'll see in the spec that you're gonna have to detect when the button's pressed. This isn't super complicated. And it's if you guys were able to figure out how to detect the uh, voltage reading in the photoresistor one, this should be even easier than that. Um, you'll get a high value when it's pressed, a small value when it's not. And so you just gotta choose some transition value in between to tell when it's on or off. Um, if you're getting only high values, that means your button's probably inserted the wrong way. You should rotate it. 
Mm -hmm. And the way to prevent um, you inserting your button the wrong way is just like connect, uh, use the two diagonal leads instead of two like leads that are facing each other. That, that way you will never short your button by accident. Okay. And we'll talk more about buttons. This is a very um, simple description of how to use buttons, but we'll talk more about buttons in the win in winter quarter. There's more to buttons than you think. Okay. And we just put um, the potentiometer and the voltage divider circuit here for your reference. Remember you connect the middle pin to um, with wherever you want to read voltage because that pin will have variable, we will have the variable resistance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, real quick, don't uh, connect the two, the other ends, the one and three pins on your, um, your potentiometer together because that will just skip over the yeah. resistance entirely and that'll show your yeah. circuit. So don't do that. Yeah. If you see over here, this the potentiometer directly translates translates to this voltage divider circuit. So like, don't do stuff that you wouldn't do on this circuit, such as short. Um, okay, and here are some Arduino functions. Um, so we, we're going to be using analog read, analog write, and you might want to use map. It's optional. You you can totally do this project without using the map function, but I put it here for reference. So don't forget to do pin mode when you're doing Arduino. Um, that happens to be the one thing I forget all the time and I don't know why my circuit is not working, but it's pin mode. You have to do pin mode and setup. And then if you want to use the serial monitor, you have to do serial lab again and choose 9,600 for your baud rate. We'll talk more about that in winter quarter as well. And when in doubt, um, check the documentation for your functions. So like when you, whenever you don't know how to use these functions, just check the documentation. So I've linked it here. They have super nice documentation and you should be able to figure it out, right? Any questions? Okay, I'll stop the recording right here.